Welcome everybody on the last lecture of the anatomy, histology and embryology for pharmacy students. Uh, today we need to discuss the fetal period, the signs and uh, maturation of the newborn baby, plus we need to revise and talk about the malformations uh, and their causes. Let's revise first the life of this intrauterine period. As we see, uh, somewhere we have the onset of the last menstrual period, and we know that somewhere on the 14th week we have an ovulation. Uh, shortly after the ovulation, we have the fertilization, and from the fertilization, the first uh, two weeks as a short period is called as zygote period. Meanwhile, from the uh, zero day or first day until to the eighth uh, week and end of the eighth week, this longer period is so-called uh, embryonic period of the interuterine life. Of course, uh, we also should to know and note that the entire interuterine uh, life is divided into three uh, periods, the first trimester, the second and the third one. It's according to the first, second and the third three months of the intrauterine life. Uh, what we should to see and note here, during uh, this embryonic period, especially between the third and eighth weeks, we can see the organogenesis of uh, the embryo. Meanwhile, after the eighth week, we still have some organs which are developing and differentiating, but here especially we can see and detect the maturation of the organs for the fetus. At the end of the first trimester, uh, the embryo length is approximately uh, 8 cm and the body weight is just 15 grams, no more, so it's relatively small. Uh, we also see that and uh, know that during the second three months, uh, especially the fetus will grow in length and practically the total length of the embryo will be duplicated or more than duplicated. Meanwhile, uh, from 15 gram, the embryo will reach almost the half kilogram, 600 gram body weight, but this body weight will be gained much more during the uh, third three months or the third period, uh, and uh, approximately at the time of the birth, the newborn baby is approximately uh, 50 centimeter long and uh, 3,500 gram. The entire uh, intrauterine life or pregnancy is should to be 38 to 40 week. This is the normal length of it and approximately uh, 10 moon month. Let's see detail uh, these uh, periods. So as maybe you heard uh, during the uh, histology as well. Uh, from the ovary, here we have after ovulation the secondary oocyte, which will be fertilized somewhere in the oviduct. And uh, later on, we have many, many division, division of the zygote, uh, the morula will develop, and finally the blastocyst. The blastocyst will be implanted into the endometrium, and the development of the embryo uh, will continue inside in the endometrium. With ultrasonography, we have ability to detect uh, this uh, embryo and an implantation, and we also have ability to estimate the age and also estimate uh, the growth of it. So what we should to know, uh, during these uh, three, eight weeks after uh, implantation, we have the organogenesis. So the major organs will develop, such as the heart, liver, pancreas, and others. Uh, and uh, this uh, period is critical for the later normal uh, human development. Without them, nothing exists. Uh, during this time, and uh, later on also, uh, frequently we measured the crown rump length, which is practically the top of the head until to the bottom of the trunk. Meanwhile, the 
limbs are flexed, we cannot measure the entire length of the baby. That's why we uh, use in the embryo or fetus this CRL length. And with this CRL length, we can estimate the age of the embryo and also we can check the development of the heart and according to the heart function, we can also estimate the age of the embryo. Uh, after this uh, uh, period, the fetal period starts, which includes the second and the third trimester, and we still continue the development with ultrasonography. Uh, we still can measure of the CRL, but uh, we also can measure the femur length, the abdominal circumference as well, uh, the my parietal parameter which indicate the uh, skull size, and we also have an uh, option to screen some chromosome aberration indirectly. So with the new heart translucency, we can measure uh, the skin and the tissues below the back of the neck, and the thickness could indicate some chromosome abnormalities. Uh, parallel with this, from the maternal blood serum, we have ability uh, to collect proteins, sometimes cells, from the fetus, and uh, with uh, detection and uh, estimation of their concentration, we also can reflecting to some uh, defects, such as neural tube uh, defects as spina bifida. We also can prevent, uh, sometimes, uh, these defects if we administered certain vitamins and drugs sometimes. In case of the spina bifida or neural uh, tube defects, uh, we ca uh, can prevent with administration of the folic acid. And otherwise, the folic acid as, uh, administration is uh, highly recommended during the pregnancy and a little bit before that. Uh, we also have option uh, to amniocentesis uh, when we collecting some amno amniotic fluid, we collect some uh, embryonic cells, and on these cells we have uh, ability to analyze their chromosome abnormalities, like the number of the chromosomes and detect the extra number, or also some uh, smaller deletions, but are detectable. Uh, in the fetal period, as we mentioned, uh, first, uh, we saw that in uh, the first uh, trimester, the head of the body is almost uh, just uh, one half of the total body length. Meanwhile, in the fetal period, uh, it will be just one third of it. So the head and body length ratio will be changed. And we also need to uh, see or know the primary ossification centers uh, developed and presented and the bonification started. Also, uh, we have proportional limbs later, and um, what is uh, very important and easy to see and detect is that uh, in the very beginning, the eyes are located on the side of the embryo, but during the fetal life, the eyes move ventrally to their uh, final position. Meanwhile, the ears develop a very, very low level, and later on, they ascend and move lateral to their final destination here. We also see that uh, following the fourth, fifth, and sixth month length, uh, the baby will more likely elongate rather than accumulating and gaining uh, body weight. The 20 week week is could be important for us. This is the half time of the pregnancy. Uh, approximately at that time, the fetus size is approximately 17 centimeter and just 300 gram. At that time, we can feel, or not we of course, but the ladies, the pregnant ladies could feel the movements of the fetus. Otherwise, these movements could be felt also a bit earlier, a bit later, uh, depend on uh, the ladies and uh, their habit as well. Uh, approximately, this is the earliest time when we already can determine the sex with ultrasonography as well. What we should to see and know how uh, this uh, second uh, trimester uh, fetal uh, fetus seems to be or looks like. As you see, uh, we have uh, 
eyebrows and we have a specific uh, hair or kind of hair covering on the baby which is a kind of fine fetal hair is much more fine and totally different than the normal hair this is so-called lanugo and we also uh, could see so-called vernix case oza it's a kind of fatty lipi, lipid uh, feel uh, structure uh, covers uh, the skin and this is the result of the secretion of the sebaceous glands. The eyelids usually covers the eyes and uh, contrary to the newborn uh, during the second trimester the skin as you see it's uh, much more reddish thin and uh, wrinkled since we don't have enough fat below it we would stretch it. And let's see the last trimester of the uh, fetal period. Uh, we already agree that the weight of the fetus is increases. So from this uh, 600 gram, which uh, could be detected at the end of the second trimester, we'll gain up to 3,000 3, or 3,500 gram. Uh, we also can see deposition of subcutaneous fat, so this wrinkled skin will be normal skin and practically uh, the contour of the uh, fetus and embryo will be much more uh, humanoid-like. It's also no, uh, important to know during the seventh uh, month or below the seventh month the lungs are immature but the lungs still developing and during the 28th or a little bit earlier to the 28th week the surfactant of the lung start to produce. This is important uh, to the proper function of the lung after the birth. If we have uh, practically birth before it, we need to somehow prevent it or add artificial surfactant to help the survival of the embryo. Uh, let's see the head and body ratio as a summary. In the first trimester, on the very beginning, as you see, almost the half of the total body length uh, is the head. During the second trimester, the head or the relative size of the head will be decreased and uh, it will be just hard time of the body length. During the third trimester is approximately the one fourth of the head for the total length and during the newborn the head and body length ratio is one to four. Let's see how the newborn baby we can describe and characterize. The length of the pregnancy is uh, considered to be somewhere, somewhere 266 days uh, until uh, 280 days. But even if it's uh, born on the 41st uh, week, it should be considered as normal uh, time of the uh, birth. Uh, after the birth, the umbilical cord is cut and the placenta is also born after uh, the baby. And a small amount of uh, vernix casaosa could be uh, found on the surface of the newborn. Sometimes uh, we need to carry out caesar section according to the circumstances. So it's highly determined uh, the size, the length and the form of the pelvis and the shape of it and also how the embryo head is positioned or inserted to the inlet of the pelvis. Let's see and summarize uh, the maturation signs of the newborn baby. Here in this picture you can see practically it's uh, extremely uh, pinkful, pinkish. The length of the skin, the length of it is almost half meter ranging somewhere 50 to 51 or 2 centimeter. Uh, small amount of lanugo we can detect however it's uh, already lost uh, at the time of the bird and especially we can find them on the shoulders somewhere here. At level of the external genitalia we need to know that the major labia already covers the minor labia and in the scrotum we should to find the testicles. At nail level the nails should to cover the tip of the fingers and also, the limbs are slightly uh, flexed and well developed. Uh, 
Uh, it's also important to know certain reflexes uh, if a trigger should to see as a reaction, and in lack of these reflexes, it could uh, practically indicate some kind of uh, aberration. To test or have a standard description of a newborn baby, uh, we widely use the APGAR score. The APGAR is an abbreviation. The A is meaning the appearance. So according to the appearance, the skin uh, description, we can give numbers from zero to two. Of course, the pinkish body and extremities is the healthiest. The number of the pulse. Uh, if we have a uh, decreased pulse or zero, that is not good. Official, the pulse for the baby is normal above 100 per minute. The grime is, so do we have any response? If you trigger, like uh, there is no response, try to grime missing or uh, crying. That is the best. The activity of it. So it's very important to see the newborn baby is practically flexed without reaction or we have some flexion. Moreover, uh, the arms and legs resist and don't allow you to extend them. Also, respiration, we need to know is a weak respiration or no respiration or is it strong and associated with crying. That is the best. All together, we can collect 10 points and uh, ranging 7 to 10 is uh, not as a normal range of it. What else we should know? The normal birth body weight is uh, between 2,500 gram to 400 gram. Below uh, this weight is uh, indicate as small for gestational age and usually is associated with premature uh, birth. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the big heavy babies and their uh, body weight is frequently associated with uh, diabetes of the mother. What else we should to know? We also could find post if the fetus is born after the 42nd uh, week or prematures if they born before the 38th week. Uh, usually, especially the premature uh, babies uh, practically have much more less birth weight. Uh, their skin is almost fully covered by lanugo, not just on the shoulders you can find, and they have high risk for several diseases uh, as the respiratory distress syndrome, the cerebral palsy, eye problems, the cerebral bleeding, and they delayed uh, in the development. Of course, we also need to note and stress that uh, thanks to the infrastructure and uh, modern techniques, we have ability to prove uh, survival for uh, practically 24, 26 uh, gestational weeks, uh, babies or fetus, so they can survive. But uh, we should to see and know that uh, before the 23rd week birth, practically the chance of the survival is close to the zero. Here you can see a summary of the human development and also you can see the critical uh, periods of the human development. So you see that uh, especially uh, the organs such as the heart and the limbs, you can see the critical periods is somewhere in the embryonic life. Otherwise during embryonic life we have uh, increased uh, sensibility to outer uh, factors and uh, something uh, development failure. Meanwhile, in the fetal period, we have decreased, but we still have uh, sensitive structures such as central nervous system or ear. And let's see and summarize the congenital malformation and their causes and causalities. Those uh, practically uh, disorders that uh, we see after the birth, they are caused by teratogenes. The teratos coming from the Greek is indicate monster. So many times we see that uh, these uh, newborns have a malformation, aberration, which seems to be bizarre monster-like view. And we should to know which teratogenes or factors can lead for these uh, malformations. 
Uh, rest of the time, chromosomal and genetic factors lead to these malformations. Uh, it could be a numerical aberration of the chromosome, which meaning that we may have an extra chromosome or uh, we have a missing chromosome uh, that could be found in the Down, Turner, and Klinefelter syndromes. We also can detect structural abnormalities again chromosome level which is usually result in uh, deletion transpositions of uh, chromosome segments uh, these diseases uh, we can find as Kudishat syndrome or the prader willi syndrome gene mutations is also described uh, and usually behind to the hemophilia and phenocataluria we can find and detect these gene uh, mutations we have several environmental factors, the so-called NOXA, which also can lead and result in uh, something structural functional malformation. Uh, these are, for instance, the infections such as uh, rubeola, herpes simplex, uh, HIV or toxoplasma infections. We also need to highlight the importance of physical agents such as the hyperthermia or the ionic radiations. Uh, of course, maybe I think for us the chemical agents are the most important since we prescribe many drugs, uh, vitamins, uh, and uh, hormones. And uh, these drugs uh, and medicines have some side effect which may cause some uh, functional or structural uh, uh, disorders at birth. We also need to note that, however, sometimes at the background we have just one chromosomal or environmental factor as cause. Many times we see the results or summary of uh, many factors and behind to the 55% of these disorders we can see multifactorial background and superposition of these factors, effects. Uh, also, as you see, the effect of teratogenic factors highly depend on the genotype of the mother and the father as well. Also, the current stage of the embryonic life, and this is maybe the crucial for us, since uh, at a zygote level, uh, the miscarriage, there is no effect. So, at that level, we have the all or the nothing rule. So, if there is uh, something factor which uh, disrupt the development of the zygote, the zygote will die and there will no pregnancy, no result. Uh, meanwhile, the embryonic period is the most dangerous and the critical period since uh, these factors may cause some changes which not result in death but may result in these disorders. And we have also fetal period where uh, practically we can say uh, it's less dangerous but still dangerous and enough to result uh, many malformation in the newborn. Also, if you're talking about especially chemical agents or uh, radiation, the, they are highly dose dependent and it's also important how long is the exposure what suffered this baby and the mother. What types of abnormalities we have? We can talk about malformations. What are these malformations? The malformations are uh, that which uh, occur during the organogenesis and may result uh, in the total or partial absence of an organ. Meanwhile, we can see disruptions. Uh, during disruptions, practically we already have developed organs, but maybe at the big ground or during uh, the fetal life, we have something uh, vascular atresia or problem, and according to the shortage of nutrition, the development won't continue or practically that local structure will die. We also can see and find deformations when practically there is no problem with development and there is no factor which uh, interrupt this development and not chemical or not at molecular level. But we have something physical factor such as increased compression or volvus or torture of uh, the umbilical cord which can limit the growth or the shape especially of the lymph 
grow. And uh, this one example is the congenital clubfoot. We also can talking about syndrome. So many times we cannot see just one simple result of uh, this exposure. We can see uh, practically several symptoms or uh, co-express uh, symptoms, uh, which could be minor or major abnormalities. Minor abnormalities like the semia increase or Mongo Mongolian fold in the uh, I, or major abnormalities are, for instance, the heart uh, defects, such as valve defects or interarterial, interventricular defects or absences. We also know many times we have uh, not definitely syndrome level, but we have many associated uh, symptoms uh, and uh, disruptions, and behind of that uh, we cannot detect uh, any uh, single factor that can result in these uh, associations. Let's, uh, let me introduce first the chromosomal and genetic uh, variations, ab abnormalities. One or maybe the commonest uh, abnormality is the Drown syndrome. This is the 23rd uh, chromosome trisomy. So we have an extra 23rd first uh, chromosome, uh, which results of a, a meiotic non disjunction and results an extra chromosome. Uh, the frequency is highly increased by the age of the mother. So meanwhile, in the beginning of the 20s, uh, practically uh, the chance or the frequency is not uh, higher than normally, but age of 40, it much more times, like uh, from three to eight times higher risk and frequency we see. Uh, what are the characteristic features of the Down syndrome childs and the uh, men's? So we can see this uh, Mongo Mongolian folds uh, or the semia increases on the hand. And uh, of course, the cardiac uh, defects and mental retardations is also uh, common uh, associated uh, defects of the syndrome. Also, we can see the Pateau syndrome that is results of the 13 chromosome uh, trisomy. Here, uh, the Pateau syndrome is frequently associated with mental retardation, sloping forehead, uh, heart defects, uh, deafness. Usually, we have uh, uh, cleft lip and palate. For instance, what we can see here, we have an extra finger which uh, name as polydactyly, and we have many eye defects as well. We also know the Edwards syndrome, uh, which is a result of the 18 uh, chromosome trisomy. Uh, here we can see uh, low set ears, we can see and detect heart defects, uh, also uh, highly associated with mental disorders uh, and uh, micrognathia, so the smaller uh, mandible, and we have malformation in the skeletal system. The Klinefelter syndrome is practically, again, we have an extra chromosome, but the extra chromosome is the Y chromosome. Uh, these uh, found be only in males. Uh, it's associated with the sterility, with testicular atrophy. We also can see they are often tall and long-limbed uh, uh, patient, and they have breast enlargements. And also, let's see an example when we have lack of chromosome. If usually one chromosome is missing, it results with that. But we have one uh, chromosome missing. This is the X chromosome, uh, but we can survive. This is the Turner syndrome. So in this case, official, they are women. However, the second X chromosome is missing. The appearance of uh, these ladies are, or they are, they, they are female, but uh, they have absence of ovaries, they have this red wide neck, and uh, also associated with mental uh, retardation and skeletal deformities. Let's see, uh, meanwhile, the chromosomal uh, or numeric uh, difference, some structural chromosomal defects. One is the Kriduchat syndrome. Uh, practically, this is a small part of the lesion for the fifth chromosome. Uh, 
Uh, usually the newborn babies cry like a cat. That's why it's introduced in French, this coup de chat syndrome associating to the crying cat. Usually they have a small skull uh, vertex, which is microcephalia. Uh, also we have mental retardation and we many times see and detect heart diseases. Another is the Angelman syndrome. Uh, in the Angelman syndrome we can see a small deletion in the maternal 15 uh, chromosome and it's highly associated with mental retardation, wide mouth and widely spaced teeth which is also associated with something uh, like inability to speak or deteriorated speaking. Another same chromosome, but be careful. The Angelman syndrome is result of the 15 maternal chromosome uh, that partial deletion. Here, the 15 chromosome, but paternal is broken and again deleted partially. And in the Prader-Willi syndrome, we have hypotonia uh, with overweight and hypogonadism. Official, they are also men's and they have mental retardation. Let's see the chromosomal and genetic factors behind to the intersexualities. Let's see, for instance, the female pseudohermaphrodites. So these ladies uh, have a double X chromosome, so based on their genetic, they are ladies. Uh, however, they uh, much more looks like men, like ladies, and uh, this is associated with other genital syndrome. So Official, the external genitalia is highly uh, masculinized and practically the clitoris looks like a penis. What could be in the background? Uh, also could be associated with hyperplasia of the adrenal gland which results in overproduction of adrenocorticotrope hormone and testosterone and this testosterone uh, from the uh, adrenal gland also can induce this masculinization. We also have male pseudohermaphrodites. Uh, official, uh, these males have uh, male genetic background, so they have X and Y chromosome. We have testes and external female genitalia together. And uh, what we can find in the background, we also may see testicular feminization. Then practically we have normal androgen uh, production from the testes but the androgen receptors are missing or not work properly. According to that, the androgen receptors cannot uh, control the masculinization and they often consider uh, as a female since their penis are absent, but uh, uh, these girls uh, later will be highly masculinized as, and looks like a man as well. Let's see the uh, crucial environmental factors what we need to pay attention. One is the German measles or rubella. Uh, this is extremely dangerous and uh, the result of uh, this virus effect highly depend on uh, the stage of the embryonic development. If uh, early we could find microphthalmia and cataract and practically uh, loss of the vision, uh, meanwhile later we can see deafness or septal defects of the heart and also we can see sometimes malformation of the teeth or could be associated with mental retardation. Chickenpox or varicella. It's also dangerous especially in the first uh, trimester of the pregnancy is uh, practically could result in scanning of the skin, the hypoplastic or smaller uh, limbs uh, and uh, usually associated with mental retardation and uh, eye defects. And also frequently we see uh, other infections such as uh, cytomegalovirus, uh, herpes simplex virus, uh, IgAV or uh, toxoplasma gondii infections. This is a protozoan infection or syphilis. What other environmental factors can induce disruption and malformations of the newborn? One is the ionizing radiation, one of the most uh, practically dangerous. 
The background radiation normally do not disrupt the normal development, however the increase uh, radiation such as x-rays, uh, computer tomography or radiation therapy, radiotherapies uh, could increase this uh, ionizing radiation and can lead in some structural, structural defects like a uh, vertebral cleft, cleft palate or uh, extra finger uh, if you uh, prefer. So then as a doctor or when you been asked uh, are you pregnant or could be pregnant we need to pay attention before we carry out the x-ray computer tomography or uh, radiotherapy on the patient also uh, these uh, effects and the results could be seen in uh, as results of uh, atom or nuclear weapons atom bomb effects especially in Hiroshima or uh, Chernobyl but uh, usually we have miscarriage and um, somewhere before the first year uh, these uh, child will die usually the hyperthermia is also an important environmental factor so if the mother has an elongated high fever it also could result in uh, uh, problems. Many times you have uh, miscarriage and sauna bath also can induce it. Let's see other environmental factors, drugs and medicines. So, uh, one was the thalidomide or contergan that we use uh, widely and uh, uh, whoa, uh, sleeping pill and, uh, and anti-emetics. But the problem was that in this anti-emetic is that uh, is uh, associated finally with partial absence of the extremities or shorter extremities or cardiac abnormalities and approximately uh, f for a bit longer than a decade uh, we use and approximately 10 to 20 thousand victims we had thanks to god nowadays uh, we don't use so widely the thalidomide but in several diseases we still use nowadays methotrexate is also a dangerous uh, molecule practically is an antagonist of folic acid and we use for uh, treatment for tumors and uh, autoimmune diseases and widely used it can result at maybe anencephaly meningocele uh, cleft lip or palate such as here we have many anticonvulsants as uh, diphenyl hydanton or trimethadone which is also uh, associated with uh, mental disorders, calf plate and cardiac defects. We still have many other drugs as uh, antipsychotic drugs like lithium or phenothiazine or uh, anti-anxiety drugs as uh, diazepam or meprobamat. We also have antibiotics which has unfortunately uh, serious side effects for the newborn baby so if during pregnancy we administered uh, for instance streptomycin is highly associated later with deafness of the newborn baby or sulfonamides many times result in nuclear jaundice or uh, tetracyclines can disrupt uh, a little bit the bone and tooth development and may result in abnormalities. The analgesics, especially the aspirin, is in high dose, could be harmful, especially uh, in the third trimester. The isoretinoin, which practically used as uh, vitamin A supplementation, also can cause uh, abnormal ear development, uh, mandibular hypophysia, uh, cleft plate, hydrocephaly, what we also can see, and heart defect. So be careful when uh, we give vitamin supplementation for pregnant ladies. Also, other environmental factors such as nicotine or uh, maternal alcohol consumption and abusive drugs uh, can result in uh, disruption and malformation, uh, especially let's see alcohol consumption, uh, we have growth retardation, we have short palpebral fissures compared to normal and we have uh, smaller uh, <coughs> maxilla they have smooth relative long fear tone with thin upper limb and also is uh, associated or could associate with limb deformities and cardiovascular defects 
We also can uh, use hormones uh, to avoid to miscarriage and we can use hormones to prevent uh, miscarriage again in different ages of the pregnancy. Let's see other environmental factors such as uh, some diseases of the mother. The diabetes is also a chronic disease what the mother can suffer from and we see that the diabetes can affect the baby and especially uh, we see that if the baby uh, born from a known a treated diabetic mother, the babies are very, very huge size. They are usually over 4,000 uh, gram, and the incidence of the malformation uh, correlates the severity and uh, the duration of this diabetic or high uh, glucose concentration period. The diabetic uh, effects can result in cardiac, skeletal, or central nervous system problems. Uh, we mentioned the abnormal large newborn and what is also important uh, later the chronic diseases is much more earlier and frequently uh, presented during the life of these babies than the normal babies and uh, that was all what i would like to summarize as a short introduction of malformation uh, genetic aberration and abnormalities and uh, thank you for attention good luck for your exam and for your exam period.